Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. All the time, every time, and any time. Yes, thank you, Master. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. In Titus chapter 3. What a glorious time to be alive. Amen. In Titus ch chapter 3. Hallelujah. You know, again, I shared before about how God is bringing the body of Christ through deliverance. Amen. And, and preparing everyone, getting ready for things to be poured out. We spoke something about <clears throat> the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Amen. And in the time of the second wind, which is provision, prosperity, revelations, and things, it was going to those who were lovers of God's presence. Because the Father searches those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. And then the other ones, that, which were the foolish virgins, they refused to gather. They didn't get the wine. They didn't stay filled. And the provisions were bypassed them. We are in a process of multiple conversions, multiple transitions, but all about regeneration. There's a regeneration process that we are in right now. <clears throat> and again, it goes back to the individuals that are lovers of God's presence. The fulfillment is God's presence. Remember we shared that every thing that you need, every question you have, everything you need, all of your answers are in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Everything is in the presence of the Lord. So the enemy will do everything he can to prevent you from getting into God's presence. And there are time release messages with a special time release anointing that follows it. So that's why we don't want to be misled or deceived. And Titus chapter 3 and verse 1, would you read it with me? It says, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey, to be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kind, kindness of the love of our God and Savior Jesus toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, this is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. In other words, this regeneration, renewing is a preparation to the heirs of Christ and the hope of eternal life. We are in this regeneration process which needs to be affirmed or what I want to say reminded all the time. We need to understand these things because without understanding, people get misled. We are in a time of restoring that has been damaged because that's what regeneration process is. It restores things that have been damaged. Does everybody understand that? Now, they must be according to God's time and will. Is everybody with me? It's a time of restoring 
that which has been damaged or lost. It's a time of awakening or to be made alive spiritually. That's what this is happening right now. This is a regeneration process. That's what regeneration is all about. I'll say that again. It is a time for restoring which has been damaged or lost. It's a time of awakening and to be made alive spiritually. Regeneration. In Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2. Praise God. In verse 1. I knew he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. And once you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, whoa, <laughs> even when we were dead in trespasses, now that's phenomenal. Even when we were dead, that's unsaved. Amen? That's lost, living outside of salvation's uh, truth. Among whom also we all once, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and were by nature children of God, who is so rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive. That's a part of the regeneration. He made us alive together with Christ. In other words, spiritually awakened. By grace you've been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith and that of not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? workmanship created that's birth see we've been born again we are a new creation that's what the word calls it we've been created in the regeneration but in the new creation there's a regeneration process that we must cooperate with and it's continued generate regeneration for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. Rebirth in the Spirit as Christ is making all things new. Spiritually and physically. Things are becoming new spiritually and physically. It may like look out there that all kinds of things are happening. They are. It may look like uh, disasters, this and that. There is. Sometimes things have to be destroyed, be destroyed to be rebuilt. Amen? We are his workmanship. In other words, we are created. We're birthed in Christ as a new creation to display and disperse a life of good fruits, good works, of integrity of Christ. Why? Because the sinful flesh cannot stand in the presence of the Lord. The process is again to separate and acknowledge between the spirit, soul, and body which one is leading each one of us. So that we can discern. Remember, there's a separation through the regeneration. Which one is leading and which one is leading us, a living, you know. In Romans 8, verse 18. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. Verse 18. Let's speak it, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Is that going to happen without regeneration? No. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Hello. For the creation was subjected to fertility not unwillingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. This is the process of regeneration. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we who are also of the what? First fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But we hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait for it with perseverance or endurance. This regeneration of new birth as sons and daughters of God, we are the first fruits in the regeneration process that take possession. We take possession now. And it only can happen through cooperation with the regeneration. In other words, we are now taking possession. Through the process of regeneration, things are being restored. Things are being brought back. Things that were taken from us are being brought back. And I'm talking about territory. I'm talking about things spiritually. Amen? God is rewarding and restoring. Some things that were lost physically will be restored spiritually. Everybody okay? It's going to take cooperation to the utmost with obedience and yielding. We must be responsive to every call that he has for us. We can't miss. Every miss is a miss opportunity for uh, advanced growth for regeneration or the process of regeneration. And Galatians chapter 4. Oh, happy days. Galatians 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, or Daddy. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. But if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Through Christ. So again, as heirs of God Almighty into a regeneration process, we are joint heirs of Christ with more things being released to us. But we don't want to miss these things. We are joint heirs of Christ. In other words, we are constantly being removed from the elements of the world's bondage and influence. That regeneration doesn't stop. You know, it always reminds me of... Uh, we must hold on to regeneration. We can't let go. We can't compromise it. Every time there's a let go of compromise, there's another de a delay. Because we must catch up. And we can't catch it up. Only the Holy Spirit can catch it up. But every time that we compromise 
or get misled or distracted or something where God is trying to bring us through. Again, when there's times of sufferings and challenges, so many people have, they run. They, they quit. They, okay, you know, instead of the Lord saying, look, I want, you to bring, I want to bring you in this. Why? Because I want to expose some of the stuff. Because without you getting in this, you won't regenerate. Amen. Does everybody understand? See, we're learning more and more different types of battles. We're learning more different things in the powers of darkness. We are learning more and more things that are temptations. We're learning more, more things of God's holiness and righteousness. We're getting closer and closer and stronger to a stronger presence and stronger anointing that God is releasing. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. That chosen is into that place. Does everybody understand? That chosen allows you to be, have access. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I mean, uh, verse 6, chapter 6, verse 11, sorry. 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections, emotions, or desires. Hello. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God as God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people if they do something. If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Again, People get caught up by distractions soulishly or fleshly. And what it does is it restricts. People are restricted by soulish and fleshly desires, not approved by God or God's timing. It delays regeneration process. And they're not able to differ between the spirit, soul, or body, or what we call the flesh. To maintain the awakening of a new man, the soul must be accomplished, must accomplish a special level of conversion. And that conversion is through his word. Because you must know the promises of who you are and what the word says. Again, the soul must accomplish a level of conversion through the process of his word. <laughs> and the flesh must uh, reach a level of death. Amen? That's why we must bury that flesh. That's why the word says, deny yourself because self is your flesh. Amen? Why? That's the way the cooperation is with the regeneration. Every day, even while you're asleep, you're going through regeneration. You're also being revived. You're being awakened. God is putting another desire in you to go more, to go deeper. You may see something special. God may expose all of the stuff that's soulish in us. He's saying, look, if this is still too soulish, this, when are you going to get rid of this? When are you going to get rid of this? Will you cooperate with my regeneration? Why? Because I want you to be like me. Amen. Second Peter one. Second 
2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. Is the knowledge in His Word? Amen. It's also in His presence, isn't it? Amen. And of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by the glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, access to the divine power to express his divine nature. With a continuous dismantlement of earthly desires replaced with heavenly desires. This is the regeneration. I'll say it again. In other words, we have access now to the divine power to express his divine nature with continuous dismantlement of earthly desires. And where are these desires? The core of all desires is in our heart. <clears throat> so there's a constant, continuous dismantle of earthly desires, and they are now being replaced with heavenly desires. This is a place where we start to begin to work with perfect harmony of the life of Christ. In Psalm 17. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Regeneration process. Psalm 17, verse 1. Let's speak it. We'll speak the first nine verses. Is everybody there? Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your what? Your presence. So if, you're, if, the presence, if you're not an individual that loves to live in the presence of God or as a worshiper, are you going to be vindicated? No. Why? It says vindication comes from his presence. The more that God's presence is on you, the more vindication will come. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me. O oh God, incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. You who save those who what? Trust in you from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me and from my deadly enemies who surround me. What a prayer. Vindicate me from your presence. Again, vindication comes from where? His presence. Without his presence, there's no vindication in the regeneration process. There's something else chastening. Does everybody understand it? 
the difference between vindication and chastening. Remember, we're talking about the foolish and the wise virgins right now. In the regeneration, God is trying to still regenerate even the foolish. Amen? He doesn't quit, but they're not cooperating enough. And their lack of cooperation is causing a delay because they're not carrying the oil. They're not carrying the presence of God. So the individuals that are God's presence is will be vindicated. The individuals that are lacking God's presence will be chastened. This is a part of the regeneration process. If you remember what we talked about, what is the regeneration process? It's a place of renewing, awakening, restoring. Amen? And it's also associated with vindication. There can't be a regeneration process without vindication. Psalm 26. Hallelujah. Psalm 26, verse 1. Let's speak it. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my thoughts and my heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes. I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with the idolatrous mortals. I want you to look at this. Look how he separates himself. I mean, this is a this is a this is a dude that has identity. I've separated. I will not sit with the idolatrous mortals. Why? Because I'm eternal. My identity is true. Amen. I'm allowing God to bring that trans, that regeneration process more and more and more. Why? So when I awake, I'm going to be like Him. Nor will I go with the hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of the evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, and I, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of your wondrous works, Lord. I have loved the habitation of your house. That means the presence of God. And a place where your glory dwells. Your habitation, your glory. <laughs> Vindicate me because I love your presence. Bottom line. Why? Where does vindication come from? His presence. It's a part of regeneration. So is God trying to get us more and more and more into his presence? Yes. Yes. And those who lack his presence will be, con will be chastened. They will not be vindicated. Hello? Psalm 43. Glory. Psalm 43. In verse 1. Let's speak it. Psalm 43, verse 1. Vindicate me. Woohoo. O oh God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out your light and your truth and let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. What's in this tabernacle? His presence. Then I will go to the altar of God, to my God, exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Again, vindication comes from the presence of the Lord, doesn't it? Amen. So the more the presence is on you, the more. How many of y'all know that vindication can also bring favor? He said, let my light and truth lead him to the presence <laughs> where God can vindicate you. In Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 
That's why we must be lovers of his presence. Allowing the regeneration process to be complete. Hebrew. Hebrew 12. So they either be vindication or chastening. Now there's something out that's also involved there. What about the lost? Condemnation. Death. Why? Because they're living outside of salvation's truth. And you got to remember something. They blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they rejected salvation. That is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit now. Hebrews 12, verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor discourage. Be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. In other words, he's like saying, get in my presence and quit playing religion. And quit living out of your, stop living out of your emotions and out of your flesh out of your mind and out of your desire. Throw yourself into my presence. If you endure chastening, God deals with you with son, as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had husband or human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed fit best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been what? Trained by it. So chastening is a process of training. Why? To get them back into God's presence and partake of the regeneration. Is everybody okay? Chastening, not vindication. You know, vindication is also an area of cutting off wickedness. Everything is going out. You got to look at the re re everything is being regenerated. The whole earth. I'm not surprised at the whole universe. God's in the process of regenerating everything, awakening, bringing back, restoring, bringing things to life. But everything must die first before it can come back to life. Amen? Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Regeneration process. Verse 1, let's speak it. For we know that our earthly house, this tent is, destroy, if, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavenlies. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our what? Habitation, which is what? From heaven, uh, God's presence. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown and being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. 
For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yet well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or what? Bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are, we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. In other words, we want to be more clothed with his presence. We want to be heaven-bound. You know, Sunday we were leaving. I was driving home, and there was a guy on a bicycle coming across the street. And the Lord said to me, he's homeless. And I'm saying, okay. I, I agree. He, he looks homeless, you know. Usually, I think he had everything he owned on this bicycle. And, uh, he, and the Lord said to me, that's not what I'm trying to show you. I said, what? He said, the world is homeless. I said, what do you mean? He said, everyone that's without my presence is homeless. Of course, I said, why didn't you tell me when, I was, when we were teaching today about your presence? <laughs> I said, well, you could have told me this a little bit earlier. He said, no, it wasn't for today. And I realized that it was for tonight. The reality, you look all around the world. They could live in mansions and castles, but without his presence, they are homeless. They're homeless. We've got to be able to see these things. And through the regeneration, God is going to give us new eyes. He's creating that heart that's pleasing to him. We'll be seeing things through the natural. We won't be swayed or bribed. We'll be chasers and lovers of his presence, nothing else. That's where he wants us. Why? Because if you have God, you have everything. You have everything. He won't hold, withhold nothing. He'll release it according to his time. And then sometimes he releases it just to surprise you, to let you know he's there. Amen? <laughs> Again, <laughs> he said that uh, the 2021 definition of homeless, homelessness is humans without the Lord's presence. Remember the wise virgins, they'll be vindicated and promoted with provision and strategies. The foolish will be chastened. And the lost Living outside of salvation's truth will bring condemnation and judgment. Is everybody okay? And I'm, I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. Regeneration process. How many of y'all know healing comes with regeneration? Hmm. You know, in the regeneration also, he wants us to know his benefits. He wants us to know what his covenant is. He's breaking us free from worldly traditions and covenants. One of the things he said to me, he said, um, I want to break loose my people from false commitments. Those are things that we've agreed with to make an, a commitment, but it wasn't from God. It was an emotional decision, emotional commitment. When God said, that's not what I said. That's what your heart, that's what your emotion said or your flesh said. 
emotional, emotional commitments, which are not from him. This, I'm telling you, in this regeneration process, all kinds of things are going to start flinging. We're in it. We've been in it. But you're, gonna, you're seeing it more and more. You'll see it more and more in the world because you know what? The righteous is going to be vindicated. Those who are carrying the presence of God will be vindicated more and more and more. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Let's speak it. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? Passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides for what? Can you do the will of God without his presence? No. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. Yes, they've got their own parties and everything. By which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They're homeless. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know these things. Does everybody get it? And you what? Know these things. I have not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one? He's an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, <clears throat> you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which, te which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. In the regeneration process, it's the anointing. Why? Because you're carrying the anointing. You're carrying God's presence, and the anointing is bringing you through that regeneration because the regeneration is by the Spirit of the living God. Regeneration comes from His presence. You know, you got to ask yourself, well, who's going to be able to stand in His presence? Sin doesn't make it in His presence. Amen? He's the anointed one and His anointing, and we are the offsprings of the anointing. Does everybody get it? So in the process of, in this generation process, be ready, be prepared for what's happening. You're about to see all kinds of things begin to shake and quake even stronger than they did before. Why? Because God's presence is getting stronger and stronger, and he's causing more and more of his people to come more and more into his presence and to begin to lay down all these other things that are false fulfillments. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We submit all to you, Lord. We thank you for vindicating us from your presence as lovers and carriers of your presence. I ask for your blessing over each and every one and revelation to each and every one that is hearing this message, time-release message that you have brought into this realm. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.